pastoralist in the modern world, history, social studies, question and answer. 1. Explain why nomadic tribes need to move from one place to another. What are the advantages to the environment of this continuous movement? Answer. There were many need of nomadic tribes to move from one place to another. The nomadic tribes had no regular field of their own from where they could add fodder for their cattle. They lived with their herd in the low hills of Himalayas from September to April because these huge mountains are high covered with snows. During this period, in these areas, the dry scraps forest provided pastures for their herds during this period. With the onset of summer, as the snows melted and the hill sides began to be covered with lush green with a variety of new grasses, the pastoralists started their northward march for their summer grazing grounds. Again with the onset of winter, when the mountain began to be covered with snow and there were dark of nutrition forage, these pastoralists on the move again, this time on their downward journey. The movement of nomadic pastoralists from the downward to the upward areas and vice versa allowed sufficient time for natural restoration of vegetation grounds. The continuous shifting provides sufficient forage to the different animals both at the high mountain and the lower hills. They also helped in maintaining the quality of the pastures. Second, discuss why the colonial government in India brought in the following laws in each case, explain how the law changed the lives of pastoralists. Answer. First, wasteland rules. All grazing lands were considered wasteland by the colonial rulers as they brought to no revenue to them. If this land could be transformed into the cultivated farmland, it would result in an increase in land revenues and productions of crops such as jute, cotton and wheat. This is why the wasteland rules were formulated. However, they sounded the death the canal for pastoralists because increase in cultivated land meant an obvious decline in the pasture and a consequent loss of a means of livelihood for them. Second, Forest Act. These were enacted to protect and preserve forests for timber which was of commercial importance. These acts changed the life of pastoralists. They were now prevented from entering many forests that had earlier provided valuable forage for their cattle. They were issued permit which monitored their entry and exit into the forest. They could not stay in the forest as much as they liked because the permit specified the number of days and the hours they could spend in the forest. Third, Criminal Tribes Act. The British government eyed nomadic people with suspicious and disregarded an account of their continuous movement. They could not be tracked down and replaced in one particular place, unlike rural people in villages, who were easy to identify and control. Hence, the colonial power viewed nomadic tribes as criminal. The Criminal Tribes Act was passed in 1871, and it further ruined the lives of the pastoralists who were now forced to live in notified settlements and were disallowed and from moving out without a government permit. 4. Grazing tax. It was imposed by the colonial government to expand its revenue income. Pastoralists had to pay a tax on every animal they graze on their pastures. This right was now actioned out to contractors. They extracted as high a tax as they could to recover the money they had paid to the state and earn as much profit as they could. Later, the government itself started collecting taxes. This created problems for the pastoralists who were harassed by the tax collectors and also become an economic burden on them. 3. Give reason to explain why the Maasai community lost their grazing lands. Answer. The Maasai lost their grazing land due to the following reason. In 1885 itself, Maasai land was cut in half by an international boundary drawn between the two colonies. Uh, British Kenya and the German Tanganyika. The best pastures were reserved for white settlement and the Maasai tribes were given arid small areas in South Kenya and North Tanzania. This lack of good grazing lands and a two-year drought led to the loss almost 60% of cattle belonging to the Maasai tribes. 
increasing cultivation and promotions of game reserve added to the their bows. Thus, the increasing power to the colonists and their adverse, ad, uh, adverses impact on the Maasai social life. This community gradually lost all its grazing land. 4. There are many similarities in the way in which the modern world force changes in the lives of pastoral communities in India and East Africa. Write about any two examples of changes which were similar for Indian pastoralists and the Maasai herders. Answer. There are many similarities in the way in which the modern world force changes in the lives of pastoral communities in India and East Africa. Here are two examples of change which were similar for Indian pastoralists and the Maasai herders. All uncultivated land was seen as wasteland by colonial powers. It produced neither neither revenue nor agriculture produce. This land was brought under cultivation in most areas the lands taken over were actually grazing tracts used regularly by the pastoralists. So expansion of cultivations inevitably mean the decline of pastures and a problem both for Indian pastoralists and the Maasai. From the 19th century onwards, the colonial government started imposing restrictions on the pastoral communities. There were issued permits which allowed them to move out with their stocks and it was difficult to get permit without trouble and harassment. Those found guilty of disobeying the rules were severely punished. If you like the video, don't forget to press the like button and subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you.